Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having a good week. We've only uh, one more day till we're uh, TGIF here. So, again, good morning. Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Steve Lieberman, and I'm a national product manager with Graybar. I'd like to welcome everybody to our Graybar's G2 Talk presentation this morning on practical considerations for implementing prefabricated data centers. This talk is part of a webinar series we offer each month for our data communications customers. We have a great discussion lined up for you today, so we hope you all enjoy it. Uh, but before we get started, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. First of all, if you're one of the first 50 people who have joined us in on this presentation this morning, you'll be receiving a coupon for a free cup of coffee, courtesy of Graybar, as a thank you for your time today. Also, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a box for Q&A. Feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation. We'll address as many questions as time permits at the end of the presentation. So at any time, go ahead and uh, submit those in that box. Lastly, our G2 talks are all archived on graybar.com website. So you'll be able to view this presentation again. And recommend it to others if, if you think uh, it'd be uh, good for them. So we're happy to team up today with APC by Schneider Electric as a data communications distributor Graybar works alongside APC to bring you data center solutions designed to make it easy to expand your speed and productivity while saving you time, energy, and money. You can visit graybar.com to learn more about our data center solutions. So at this time, I'm happy to introduce today's speaker, TJ Jeanette. TJ is a prefabricated data center specialist at APC. In this role, he specializes in support, he specialized support to APC Salesforce when discussing projects that include power, IT, and cooling modules. TJ's strength lies in his understanding of customers' needs in the engineering of data center designs. He began his career with Schneider Electric in 2006 as an engineer supporting product development, management, and technical sales. So without further delay, I'd like to turn the presentation over to TJ. Go ahead, take it away, TJ. All right, Steve, thank you so much. Um, again, TJ Jeanette, I work at Schneider Electric, uh, prefabricated data center specialist. Um, it, uh, you know, I started my career, or started out doing prefab and prefab data centers at Schneider about four years ago, and really kind of started around more of our strategy and business development. Um, still supporting the sales team somewhat, but really focusing more on how do we go to market with this with this type of a product? What is the market for this type of product? You know, really looking at a lot of the analyst reports and um, talking to different customers and figuring out where this thing fits in, and coming up with a strategy for uh, Schneider's deployment of this type of a uh, this type of a product offer. And then over the last two years, I have had the pleasure of being able to be more of a sales support. Uh, in more and more of a, in more of a sales support role. This has been really beneficial to me, um, for, you know, personal growth, but also on the side that you get the, you know, I have the opportunity to really look at the, uh, the strategy and the business development side of prefabricated data centers. And now I get to look at the practical application for the, uh, for prefabricated data centers. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk to you about today. So I, I typically do these types of presentations where, talk a little bit about, you know, some of the uh, some of the applications and some of the advantages of prefabricated data centers, um, and then I move very quickly into our case studies and, and some of the jobs we put together at Schneider, but some of the jobs in general, like why are customers actually looking at prefabricated data centers? What, what problems are pre prefabricated data centers solving um, real time? What is, you know, what have we looked at in the last year or two years? And, and what problems have this solved for customers. And then I'll get into a different, you know, how Schneider Electric approaches prefabricated data centers. But this is kind of an industry, you know, how the industry is going, how the industry is looking at prefab um, and, and how we're putting together our product offers to meet customer needs. And then I'll talk just a little bit about the, the support structure at Schneider Electric and how we can help with you or your customers putting together a prefabricated data center solution. So just to get started, um, 
over the last couple of years, we've seen uh, a kind of a shift in in prefab and and where this where this market is is going to. So initially, and, and still to some to some extent, actually a pretty significant extent, um, prefab was really big in revitalized mobile solutions, and these were solutions for in you know heavy industry mining, governments, emerging economies, some types of manufacturing, big in oil and gas as well. So areas where you don't necessarily want to build a module. Um, you want to take a uh, – you maybe want to take a pre, pre-manufactured or pre-manufactured system, build it somewhere that's more hospitable, and then send it to these particular regions. So that's really kind of where this whole idea started. It started a lot in the government, so building mo- building uh, modules that can be shipped via the, the transportation methods, methods that the Army or military uses to ship, um, or in ruggedized environments such as oil fields or mining areas where you want to build a product, you want to have a, a high-tech product in this area, um, but you don't can't necessarily build it close to the site. So that's really where these started, and we're still seeing a lot of a lot of um, activity in these areas. And some of the activity is around customers that have you know multiple sites of deployment, or even customers that just have a single one-off site for deployment. Um, the other area we've seen more and more traction in recently is uh, scalable solutions for service providers and large-scale um, data centers. So when we talk about service providers, we're talking about uh, Colo um, and, uh, and managed hosting companies. So basically, they're looking at a just-in-time uh, delivery method for power, cooling, and IT. They're looking at upfront CapEx savings and the ability to offset CapEx to when they have the customers to fill those spaces. So. This is uh, there's customers that are doing this on a, from the IT side, um, building out IT space in modules, and um, but it's real heavy on the power side. So customers will deploy large uh, switchgear layouts or um, large power modules uh, to support a section of their existing data center or a new data center. And then as they fill out the data center, they'll add another power section to that, to that, um, to that uh, site. Um, this is, we have a lot of large power customers in, in, that, are, that are leveraging prefab in this method. And then finally, uh, the last box on the right is a quick deployed pre-engineered solution for small, medium enterprise, healthcare, education. Um, so this is kind of... Uh, you know, where you've got a, a solution, a customer that is maybe deploying some of their assets to the cloud, but maintaining some of their, and maybe consolidating some of their assets at, a, at an existing facility, creating a new data center on site, and, uh, but maybe they don't want to take up additional space inside of their uh, existing uh, brick and mortar structure. So in this case, um, we're building all-in-one IT modules with power cooling and IT all existing within a structure. Um, in some cases, we're adding additional power capacity for uh, enterprise customers. In some cases, we're adding additional cooling capacity. So this is, a, this is an interesting area. And I'm going to give you examples of all three of these in the case study section of jobs where we've done this in the, uh, in the last couple of years. So next, we'll talk just a little bit about some of the advantages of prefabrication. Um, so we we there's a lot of different you know it apply the advantages of prefabricating data center components um, you know can vary customer to customer. And one of the things when you're really considering prefabrication as opposed to you know maybe doing a traditional stick built um, or uh, you know retrofitting or maybe building this smaller data center. You really do need some of these in order to make the cost model work and to gain the real advantages. You, you need to be able to take advantage of some of these things that prefabrication does um, does supply. So prefabricated data centers typically 
allow for a more flexible deployment to the data center. So you can expand beyond the limited the, the limitations of a traditional building space. You can actually uh, the the placement of these modules and where you can put them, um, and and the the way that you can actually deploy them in uh, from a, a very small um, initial build out. Uh, that meets exactly the business need, and then scaling as you go through uh, your business growth. Um, the other, you know, opportunity here is that if business flattens out, you're not oversized on your data center. So you've got that flexibility up front to place the data center or build the component to exactly what you need, and then it moves on to the next one with the scalability, and you can take that chunk, that flexible chunk of your uh, power cooling, IT, or all three, and you can scale it appropriately uh, to your actual business need. This can help defer some capital expense up front. You can minimize oversizing of, the, of your data center and really stick close to what you actually need at that time. And then as you move forward, you can scale and, and build out additional, additional pieces. So faster. This is uh, this can be debatable in some cases, um, but typically what we're seeing is that we can go through the engineering submittal, so the the preconcept engineering submittal. We can do this in about five in you know in around 16 weeks with a customer. So there are some cases where you can actually stick build in that period of time as well. Uh, potentially, but you really have to look at uh, at the full end-to-end -end model. So through the development phase, through the submittal phase, all of that um, added together can be quite extensive for both of these projects. But if we work well with the engineering group and we put together a good plan up front, we can shorten the overall planning cycle, reduce the complexity, and build a faster module. Now, as you go back to this scalability idea, once you have this module in place and you're actually set up with a with your uh, primary building blocks that are specified for your particular needs, you can rapidly deploy your next phases of data centers. So that upfront planning might be a little more extensive, and then as you go down the line, you can rapidly deploy um, multiple modules. And then the predictability side of things. So I'm, when we build these modules, we build them, and this is typical for the industry. Um, they're built in a manufacturing uh, facility that is a controlled environment. It allows for um, a full build schedule. You don't have the, some of the, uh, some of the um, downtime, such as rain and uh, other types of, of uh, labor stoppages on a particular site. So, you, and on top of that, you can work in parallel with the with the site building. So we can build the module while the site is being prepared and come together at the end. So you do end up with a predictable module. You know exactly what is being designed up front and delivered at that time. I'm going to jump into some of the case studies, and the case studies actually go into you know, both, they, they talk about, you know, where we've seen these being applicable and also some of those exact um, prefab advantages and how they play out in real life. So this is a ruggedized military application. I'm sorry, I, I have to take some of the names of uh, customers and, uh, and organizations off of these sites, but this is one of our armed forces um, that purchased this from us. And the idea here is a ruggedized module that, you know, the, the biggest thing with the military or this particular military application is it has to fit onto a C-130 uh, airplane. And in order to fit onto a C-130, you have to be in these 20-foot ISO modules. So we took the 20-foot ISO module and we broke it up into five sections. So we have five 20-foot ISO modules, two IT modules, one vestibule module, a power module, and a cooling module. We construct these modules. We actually construct these in Miami, built them all up, and then put them onto the C-130 and ship them from uh, Miami. And actually, in this particular case, we worked with a, a, uh, an integrator that did the IT integration as well. So we actually loaded the modules, or we loaded all the racks 
full of uh, IT gear as well and shipped a complete solution to Afghanistan. So we also had certain material, uh, military specs, certain mil specs that we had to meet. Um, it had to be harsh environment approved, so we had certain considerations that we had to take there, um, and it had to be able to be disconnected with seven hours. So these were some of the big outstanding issues that we had to solve, and you can kind of see how a traditional data center really wouldn't lend itself to this, uh, to these um, issues that the military was trying to solve, and how prefab really does actually uh, lend itself to it. So again, we ended up with five 20-foot ISO modules, um, an entrance vestibule, and this is one thing that we do on a lot of our modules, is these entrance vestibules. And we do it in a lot of different ways. I'll show you some other ways we build these vestibules, but the idea here is that you can separate the IT module from the outside air during your during entering and leaving the module. So you don't want to introduce, um, in hot, humid environments, you don't want to introduce the humidity into the IT space, and in dusty environments, you don't want to introduce dust. You can kind of create that trap in this vestibule module. It can also be used as a man trap, so you can put security on both the entrance door and the uh, entrance into the IT space, so you can create a physical man trap in front of the IT modules. And then the third primary thing for this is, is it acts as a staging area. You can bring boxes in, you can do unpacking in this area, and carry servers into the IT space. So again, you have two IT modules ganged together to form a single room. So these two, the two modules that sit behind the vestibule module, they sit side by side, and uh, they have, they create one single room. And then you have power module and a cooling module. The next, app, the next application is a healthcare facility up in Toronto. So this is McKenzie Health. Um, they purchased, or they were looking at a, um, a module to solve a very particular need. And th this is interesting. So uh, this is where in that small, medium enterprise or healthcare and education, this comes up over and over and over again. What we're seeing is that, especially in healthcare and education, that space inside the brick and mortar is revenue generating space. So you imagine in a hospital, it's, you know, that space that, that is taken up by a data center could potentially be operating rooms. It could be uh, waiting rooms. It could be something that is used to, for their primary mode of revenue generation. And again, same thing with universities. You can have desks. You can have another. You can have another room that is revenue generating as opposed to supporting. And data centers in these two applications are really supporting our supporting structures. So um, it's harder and harder for a lot of the IT folks in these types of environments to get more space inside the brick and mortar. So what we're finding is that they're looking for alternatives. And, you know, obviously one of the alternatives they look for is uh, can we move some of these IT assets off-site? Can we move them to a colo? A lot of them don't want to do that, though. They want to keep the assets close to their, their, to their physical site, and that pushes them to look for a, you know, an outside alternative. And in this particular case, the customer was looking, you know, they're looking at a growing data center, but they had no room inside the building to grow. Um, they also had a time constraint. They wanted to be able to have this done within, from the time we started the engineering process um, to the time it was fully deployed and operational, they wanted it done in six months. And this was driven a lot by winter uh, coming on, and they wanted, they started the planning process and wanted to have this done and deployed prior to uh, the next freeze. So we came up with a, this ended up being a relatively large module, 11 foot by 55 foot, and this is a non-ISO structure. So when you look at the, the difference between non-ISO and ISO, um, a non-ISO structure is going to be, we call them a prefabricated structure or a modular structure, and this is basically a frame that we build and then we apply modular panels to the outside of it. And uh, the difference is, is it's not a shipping, it's not a shipping container, it's not a repurposed shipping container. And the benefit here is I can build this thing in any different shape and form factor we really want to. We do have some limitations when it comes to shipping 
And in fact, this one hit one of the limitations of length. It's 55 feet long, and after 53 feet, you need a uh, special escort as you uh, transport it. But this is uh, what worked for the customer, and so we, we built it 55 feet long and uh, 11 feet wide. And the, the big benefit here is that when I build it 11 feet wide or when we build it 11 feet wide, you, have, you can put in full hot aisles and you can put in full cold aisles. So when you walk into these modules, it really feels like you're actually in a data center. It doesn't feel like you're in a trailer. It doesn't, make, it doesn't feel like you're in a confined space. They feel large. They feel spacious. They feel like a data center, a small data center, but a data center nonetheless. Um, this one had 100 kW PX UPS inside. It has 12 racks, uh, modular power, in-row cooling. So, you know, this would be considered what we call an all-in-one module. It's got power, cooling, IT, all contained within one module. And I'll show you some examples later. Actually, you know, the first example was an example where you, you separate out the uh, IT, power, and cooling into different modules, and this one had everything contained in one. So the chiller is supplied by a contractor, and this is another point I like to bring up about these is these are not just, you know, the module is one part of this. These are large projects. Um, pad gets poured. You have to pull, in a lot of cases, you have to pull new electrical service. You have to, uh, you have to figure out the condensers in the DX situation. You have to figure out chillers if you're doing a cold, uh, chilled water system. So, there is a lot that goes on at the site. You have to pour a pad. There's rigging. There's a lot of engineering. There's engineering in the module, and then there's quite a bit of engineering that goes on on site as well. Um, so that's the, that is the combination of work that really goes on during this process. Not only are we developing the actual module, but we work closely with the engineering community and the contractors, the local contractors, to help them develop that site, those site considerations as well, and put together a full package for the customer. So in this particular case, the chiller was supplied by the contractor, and we worked through a local engineer up in Toronto that uh, really drove the specifications of not only the module, but also the site. This is an example of a multi-module unit, kind of similar to what you saw with the oil or with the uh, with the um, military unit. But this particular one is for an oil and gas customer. And what I find interesting about this one is this oil and gas is one of the big oil and gas customers, huge. Um, and they have drilling sites and exploration sites all over the world. What they're looking to do is standardize on a IT platform that they can deploy rapidly to multiple sites around the world. So they have one of these in Angola, and we're in the process of, uh, of deploying one in Bakersfield, California, and they have multiple other sites that they're looking at deploying this same basic configuration. We gave them some flexibility in the configuration so they can add additional IT modules. They can make the power module a little bit bigger um, and the cooling module a little bit bigger, but overall, they're, they basically, they've, we've worked with them to create a set of building blocks that they can configure in multiple different configurations to meet the needs of what they see on site. So again, you know, the big issue here was they have multiple sites with limited controls and they're all over the world. So they need a consistent, repeatable design that can be deployed globally um, and, and be serviced and worked on in these, in this, in these global areas. So again, the solution we came up with was for multiple sites, but the same basic design. Um, you can have, they can have three to five different ISO IP containers. They have integrated chilled water within the module, and um, they also have uh, two 500 kW power modules. In this particular case, the chiller skid, a generator skid, so they can ship all of these things together, quickly deploy them on site, and uh, and get up and running with a you know a full blown data center in these remote locations. So again, we are working with an engineering firm on this. In the engineering firm, we work very closely with the engineering firm who knows the specifications of the customer, and we come together with them to create this uh, this repeatable solution for this customer.
The next application is for power modules. It's not coming up here. There it is. So this is for power modules, and these are uh, support power modules. They feed. These are actually feeding other IT modules. Um, but this is an in, this was an interesting uh, this was an interesting project. There was a couple projects that were around this. So at the end of last year, we had four projects that basically used. We started talking to all four customers using the same one-line diagram, the same electrical one-line diagram. All four customers ended up with a different with a different derivation of that one-line diagram, but nonetheless, it all started with this, the basic idea was the same, and we moved to multiple different solutions because of it. In this particular customer, we had to go through it, they, the time crunch was huge, and uh, it was an extremely rapid deploy, development cycle, extremely rapid deployment. Those were the two driving factors for the customer. They needed this thing on-site, operational. Within, They wanted it within um, like 10 weeks, and we ended up uh, – actually, I'm sorry. They wanted it in eight weeks, and we ended up at 12 weeks. So um, it had to be customized. To fit, it, they had an existing IT requirement, um, so we had to make sure that the module fit exactly what that IT requirement was. We had a space allocated to us, so we had to fit within that space, and obviously there was cost expectations of the project. Those bottom ones were a little more flexible than the time. The time was the big one. They needed this solution. Obviously, it had to be roughly in the right uh, – it had to deliver the right amount of power. But how it got there was of, le of less concern than how quickly can you get it to me. So what we found on this one is that the engineering firm and the customer were very, very flexible on how we ended up configuring, um, you know, how we, how we went about delivering the 1,200 kW of power that they needed. Um, they, you know, they were flexible on the input power. They were pretty flexible on the distribution. They were flexible on, on how we did cooling inside the module. What they needed was the power on site as quickly as possible. So what we ended up with was a 10 foot, 10, 10 and a half foot by 45 foot, again, a non-ISO power module. So this is a modular structure purpose built for this particular application. Um, and inside it has uh, two 600 kW UPSs. These are in parallel for capacity. So you have uh, one set of input switch gear, one set of output switch gear delivering a full 1,200 kW of power. In the other application that we did, the one in Maryland, that was in Texas, that the one in Maryland um, was basically, again, we started with the same one line, but we ended up with a different bus size on the input. We ended up with some different distribution on the back end. Um, and we actually, in that particular case, I think we ended up in a N plus one configuration on the UPS Still, it was 1,000 kW, but they, they took it in an M plus one configuration. Um, we did crack units in the one in Texas, and in the other one, we did uh, rooftop cooling units. So some modifications, but I bring this up because one of the things about prefabrication is that obviously every customer needs, wants different things. But one of the benefits of prefabrication is if you can start with a base design, whether that's a base design that is you know your engineer or um, you as an engineer create and use repeatedly or we create with the customer or it's one of our base designs, if we can start and kind of stick a little closer to that base design, we can move far more rapidly through the um, we can move far more rapidly through the development process and uh, and drive you know efficiencies on that on the de on the uh, on the uh, on the development cycle of these. <clears throat> so next, I'm going to talk a little bit about our product offer. Um, so this is a little bit more geared around how Schneider Electric is delivering um, prefabricated data centers. But you know, if you look around the industry, it's pretty common. There's there's some um, variations on how uh, prefab. Uh, prefab uh, manufacturers are putting out modules, but they all kind of stick to three primary areas. It's a power, 
you know, they look at the power side of things, they look at the IT space, and they look at cooling. The power side is really interesting for Schneider Electric in particular. We, uh, you know, having uh, affiliations with Square D or, you know, being owned by the same, having Square D and um, coming from uh, APC with our UPS lines and uh, power is a big part of this for us. We we see a lot of a lot of um, uh, we do a lot of business on the power side. We build a lot of power skids, so we build a lot of low voltage and medium voltage uh, switch gear skids for customers. We build a lot of UPS and low voltage skids for customers. And when I talk about skids, you can see in the upper right hand corner of this uh, of this slide. A skid, the difference between a skid and a module, a module is enclosed. It's something that could go outside, inside. It's a fully enclosed condition space. It will have fire suppression, security access, environmental monitoring inside. Whereas a skid is intended to be placed inside of a controlled environment. And the skids are really interesting in that they are not taking, you know, they're looking at more of the deployment cycle and taking advantage of the prefabricated deployment cycle than they are some of the other, you know, space advantages and and uh, and where the flexibility of where you can place these modules. The skids, on the other hand, are, you know, is something that is being, um, is something that's very, becoming uh, very, very popular in the colo space. And uh, a lot of the big colos have already standardized on skid deployments. Um, a lot of some of the some of the newer colo companies out there do full modular build out. So this is something that uh, we do a lot of. It's one of our strong suits at Schneider Electric. However, you know we also do a lot of the IT spaces. And in just a second, I'll talk a little bit more about the acquisition of AST in January and what what that brought January of 2014 and what that brought to our space. But it really broadened us from a Schneider Electric's perspective from a uh, power and cooling supplier to more of this brought us into this IT space as well. And then the cooling modules. Some of the cooling modules, um, you know, in the industry are around, you know, just delivery of chilled water, like a hydronic system for delivery of chilled water. But also the industry is also starting to create cooling um, mechanism or cooling devices that are specifically built for prefabricated data centers. And that's interesting because you're working with a limited space and uh, trying to maximize that space. And developing cooling technology that helps you do that is uh, very advantageous. So, again, if we're looking at the base design, we, we at Schneider Electric have created these base designs. And the idea behind the base design is not necessarily that you'd buy it as is. We, you know, again, back to my comment, of the closer you can stick to these, to these base designs, the quicker we can develop a full-blown solution for a customer. But we understand that it's not going to meet everybody's needs. So the idea of the base design is really to get the conversation started. So, if you ask me to sit down with you or sit down with you and a customer or you as the customer and talk about, you know, what can you deliver from an IT module perspective in a 100 kW range, I, I prefer not to sit down and say I can help you develop anything. What I prefer to do is sit down and talk about our 90 kW all-in-one unit that's got a UPS, PDU, enroll cooling. It can come with DX. And then we have some flexibility in there as well. I'll talk about that flexibility. This really gets the conversation started. It gets it pointed in a particular direction, and it also shows some of the advantages that um, our engineering team has come up with for this particular application. Now, again, we fully understand it may or may not meet exactly what the customer is looking for, so we have an engineering team that helps, you know, customize this and turn it into a, uh, a solution that is particular for the customer. All of the base designs are online, so they're at fully accessible by the public. Um, they have We have electrical one-line drawings. We have mechanical drawings. We have elevation drawings. We have some specification sheets. Um, so you can go online onto uh, apc.com and find these different base designs. 
And uh, it's a great point for kind of exploring whether or not this is uh, this fits your space, whether it fits uh, the power requirement, the density requirement, all of those things that you might be looking for. We have different flavors of IT modules um, that customers look at. So again, you know, when you're looking at uh, power, when you're looking at IT modules, you're kind of looking at two different things. You're looking at IT, you're looking at all-in-one modules, and that's got the UPS, power cooling, IT space, everything included in there. So it's basically a, you know, an all-encompassing box. And then you've also got just regular IT modules. So the regular IT modules will have power distribution, they'll have IT racks, they'll have cooling, but they may not, they won't have a UPS in it. Um, the other thing to look at is dual bay modules or multi-bay modules. So because these are, um, these are modular structures, uh, we can take these modular structures and we can bay them together to create a large continuous space. So online we show dual bay modules where you take two of these, two of the uh, single bay modules, ship them, um, and they're, they're built differently. They're built to be bayed together. And you ship them, bay them together on site, and now you can tr create one large continuous space. And you can do this, you know, we show dual bay modules online, but you can actually do this up to 8, 10, 20 modules. And we've done this in a, at one of our sites in the UK. Um, we have an 8 IT module site, or 8 IT module deployment, where they're all bayed together to create one continuous IT space. So I mentioned before that uh, Schneider Electric purchased AST in January of 2014. AST did some really interesting things around uh, around prefabrication, and they were they AST prior to the acquisition was really focused heavily on ISO modules. Um, so again, ISO being shipping containers and and the maximization of the space within that shipping container. So um, they really looked at how can you take this limited space and get as much IT compute out of it? How can you get as much compute out of it? How can you maximize the cooling space? All of these different things. So AST brought, uh, brought that into our um, existing kind of power and cooling capability, and we've created a much larger lineup of different, uh, of different solutions. So again, they, they focus a little more on the ISO shipping container, and we focused initially on modular structure, and now we have both of that capability. And these are, you know, industry-wide, this is, this is what you're going to see out there is um, these modular structures or uh, repurposing of a shipping container to create these IT spaces. This is a larger view of the IT module. And some of the stuff I wanted to point out with this slide was, you know, the IT module is just not racks in a box. Um, you are creating a full, uh, a full data center. So you've got multiple entrances and exits. Um, this is a, uh, you've got a staging lobby and electrical room. So again, the staging lobby acts as, a, as that man trap, um, the a dust and, uh, a dust and vapor barrier to the IT space. So you can um, utilize this lobby area for, you know, getting IT assets ready to move into the IT space, but also as kind of a barrier to the, uh, to the environment outside. Um, they all, all of our modules have, um, and most modules do, have uh, fire suppression, monitoring, um, environmental monitoring, they have security systems. So you're basically buying a, a full data center when you're looking at these IT modules. It's not just not just the racks. Um, there's a lot of a lot of other auxiliary equipment that goes into these modules. You can have a lot of different configurations. You can use have raised floors. We have raised floors configurations on online. Um, you can have in row cooling uh, you can use a, uh, an air handling unit that can pump cool air into the module. So lots of different ways, lots of different cooling methodologies, and a lot of different ways of supplying power, doing power distribution within these modules. One thing I would like to point out, too, is we're, uh, you know, at Schneider Electric, we, 
we put structure where which is our DCIM platform in the module or you know that's that's what we spec into it but we've also found that a lot of customers um, have their own DCIM system or have a BMS system that they want to work into the module and uh, and that's that's totally understandable and fine and we work with the customers up front to come up with a uh, a management system that works with their existing management system and ties this module in um, seamlessly to that. One of the areas that I think people kind of overlook is these modular rooms. And the modular rooms are, the idea here is that we can create, um, you know, CAD drawings and we can manufacture a room using the same panels we would use to build a prefabricated structure. So the same type of construction, the same type of layout. The difference between the modular room and a prefabricated data center is with the modular room, we can take everything apart at the factory, we can flat pack ship it to the site and reassemble it very rapidly on site. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would you want to do that? Well, if you have a large industrial uh, warehouse or you have a unconditioned warehouse, you can basically take and create a small data center within that environment. You can, you know, close off just the amount of space you need for that data center using these modular rooms. Um, and again, they deploy very, very quickly. It can all be pre-engineered off-site, brought in, flat pack shipped so that you can get it into any space and built up within these manufacturing areas or um, unconditioned spaces to create a data center environment in that space. As far as like um, when we're looking at ISO, ISO modules, the ISO modules are tight on the inside. When, you know, when a lot of people think about uh, prefabricated structures, they immediately think about well, that's going to be tight in the, on the inside. It's not going to have, you know, the space to work in there. It's, it's uninhabitable, stuff like that. So what, um, what we've done is created a rail system that allows the racks to slide back and forth and a cable tray system that allows the, uh, the cables to move along with the rack. So when, it's, when you're done working on the front or the back of the module, which you can slide, or the, I'm sorry, the front or the back of the rack, which you can slide all the way to the back or all the way to the front, giving yourself full access to that to that rack. Then you can lock it into place and uh, and uh, and, the, and set it in place. We also have some seismic rack mounting, so you can mount the racks um, on seismic um, uh, buffers, so that you have uh, some restraint or you, know, you have some. Uh, protection against seismic activity in areas that have that. So we also have base designs around power modules. Um, I talked a little bit about all of these. You know, you've got your skid-mounted power modules. You've got, uh, I'm sorry, skid-mounted skid -mounted modules. You've got uh, 250 kW power module, which has UPS input-output switchgear and a 500 kW. Again, we have a lot of variations of this on the power side, but these are good base designs to start conversations off of. And then as far as cooling modules go, you've got hydronics modules, which again are, you know, the brains and the pumps are behind a, uh, behind a chilled water system. Um, so chillers would connect directly to this and distribute uh, maybe like a tier three or a, a tier four design or tier three design to the, uh, have a tier three design around the um, the pumps and the controls. So one of the last things on the on the product side, and, and one of the things you're, I think you're going to see a lot more of is this idea around micro data centers. And and the idea here is that this is a smart bunker, and the smart bunker can basically hold one rack, and a lot of times it'd be like a converged IT type of a rack, like a a V block or some variation thereof where you've got all of the IT inside. And inside the smart bunker, you've got cooling, fire suppression, power, um, you've got monitoring, you've got security. Everything is contained within this, within this module. So basically, it's a data center, a single rack data center. 
And uh, you can these can be very robust. They can uh, sit outside if you needed them to. They can sit in rugged environments. They can sit in dirty environments and provide a consistent IT uh, experience to a particular customer. So this is a, this is a really interesting area. And uh, uh, Schneider just did a release on micro data centers, and we'll be talking a lot more about this. You'll be hearing a lot more about this from us. So... Um, Schneider Electric is kind of a plug for where we are globally. Um, we have global engineer manufacturing and engineering and support around prefab. So uh, in Barcelona, we take care of most of EMEA. Um, we take care of most of North and South America out of Miami, West Kingston, and St. Louis. And then we have uh, manufacturing sites and design teams in China to take care of the rest of the globe. So. Again, you know, we can we can build localized um, we can build localized solutions, but we can also build solutions for customers that have global uh, global reach and want a consistent solution globally. And then, last slide is around you know what can you find on the web. So if you go on to apc.com and you find the prefabricated data center section. Again, you can find all the information on those base designs. So you can look at our power cooling and IT designs. They've got mechanical drawings, electrical drawings. They've got specification sheets. And then, of course, you can reach out to people like myself and, and ask questions, and we can help uh, with a particular customer need or if you just have general questions. So that's my presentation. I'm going to pass it back over to Steve, and I hope I left a little bit of time for questions. So if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to stick around for a little bit and answer some. Yeah, you did. Thank you, TJ. That was excellent. Very, very informative presentation. One other comment I wanted to make that is if you have uh, a question uh, for us and you just want us to get back in touch with you, please just type contact in the Q&A box type contact, or if you have an opportunity or an immediate need, you know, quote me, help me, something, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So at this time, we'd like to address some questions that have been submitted. So as a reminder, submit your question in the Q&A box. Uh, first question that came in, TJ, is uh, someone asked if these modules can be uh, stacked on top of each other. Oops, we really can. We have a, uh, a site that we're, we're completing right now here in – North America, where we're stacking the dual bay modules, we're stacking them three high. So you can imagine you've got you know two bays wide, and then each one of those bays we've got three stacked on top of each other, and then just moving down the big warehouse that they that they sit in. So and just kind of on that as well. I mean, you can you know the modules not only can be you know they're they're designed to go outside, but in a lot of cases we're finding that customers are repurposing warehouse space using modules as opposed to trying to uh, build out that whole space. So um, it's uh, we're kind of seeing it half and half. A lot of people want to repurpose a, a warehouse using modules, and a lot of people want to use these modules outside. Okay, good. Uh, another question uh, that came in, uh, can the micro data center or smart bunker be placed outside? Yeah, the, micro, the, the smart bunker can be placed outside. Um, it has, it is, most of the time it's actually placed inside, but it is weather tight. Um, it can have, it can even, even have certain mil spec configurations to it, so we can do EMI shielding on it. We can do a lot of different stuff to uh, to make it very, very robust. But in general, they ship uh, completely weather tight, so it could be placed outside if it needed to be. Yes. Okay. Again, if there's any more questions, please submit them. I've, I've got one more here, and if anyone else has another one, please put it in the box, and uh, we can contact you as well uh, after the presentation. The last, uh, one more time, uh, you know, what, what's the main difference between a, a modular or an ISO structure? Uh, can you go over that real quick? Sure, yeah. The uh, So the ISO structures, again, are – you're talking about an ISO shipping container. So you're talking about it's either a repurposed or a lot of times they're purpose-built, but they're built in the ISO form factor. The The real benefit around the ISO shipping modules is that they're readily available, for one. They're a little less expensive, but they also – 
can be placed on a boat and shipped um, the, in the standard shipping method. So that's very beneficial uh, to the ISO module. Again, though, the downside to the ISO module is it's really tight on the inside. It's, you know, not very wide, not very high, so you end up with a space that is, uh, is tight, but, if, but in a lot of cases can be very functional. So you just got to, if it fits the application, that's great. And then in the modular structure, a modular structure is basically a steel frame, a steel bottom, and then a frame built around it. And then we um, add module, we add panels to the outside. So we basically build a structure, um, and we can do this in any height, width, um, length uh, that the customer wants. We do again. We have some shipping restrictions. So uh, all the ISO modules obviously fit all the shipping restrictions. Whereas with the modular structures, we have to meet those, you know, meet those particular shipping requirements. Um, but they can be very flexible too. You, you can uh, you can have create large continuous spaces with them. You can stack them, um, and again, you can get your full hot and cold aisles with them. And uh, you know, it gives us a lot more flexibility and creates more of what people are used to seeing with a data center space. Um, so that's why we primarily in North America we see modular structures uh, as opposed to the ISO shipping containers. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, TJ, for uh, answering those questions. We're about out of time at this point, so if you didn't get your question answered, a, a Graybar representative will follow up with you after the presentation. So as a reminder, this presentation will be archived on the graybar.com website. And again, thank you for your time today. We hope all of you will join us next month for the next uh, Graybar G2 talk. Have a good day.